I am going to talk about a new group of smart polymers and these are active smart polymers. So, there are many such polymers which behaves uh, very similar to the piezo ceramics or magnetostrictive materials that we have seen in the sense of both from the direct effect as well as from the reverse effect point of view. And these polymers are very useful for us. Why? Because you know the uh, elastic modulus of a polymer is uh, much less in comparison to the ceramic or the metallic counterparts. So, as a result they are more compliant. So, you can give actually very flexible shapes by these polymers and then you can use them as integrated sensors or as integrated actuators. So, our intention is to look into the polymers, those subgroup of polymers which shows some amount of smartness that is both in terms of the direct as well as in terms of the reverse effect. Now, IPMCs or this group you know of active polymers are specially important because of the demand of developing new robotic locomotion systems which would simulate the animal locomotion. In fact, if you look at the you know robot development of uh, robotics with respect to various types of robots which can simulate or biomimic the animal locomotion, then the first in the group are something like the quadruped you know stair climber titans. So, these are actually many leg kind of a you know robot and then there is this snake like robot ACMR 5 and also later on people developed bipedal walking robot. The important thing is that in all these robots the actuation for example, in this biped is achieved through the use of conventional motors, but motors are heavy motors are more power consuming and uh, they have backlashes and other problems. So, people started thinking can we not replace these motors by something like uh, you know artificial muscles. So, replacing motors by artificial muscles is something that triggered actually the development of active polymers by artificial muscles. Like these regions you know you develop muscle system with the help of polymers which can substitute the motor based system. So, hence today we will talk about some of the smart polymers. First we will define ourselves that what is an active smart polymer. We will then talk about the classifications of this electroactive polymers and then we will mostly talk about the applications of these smart polymers. So, the first thing is that what is you know an active smart polymer? The polymers that would respond to external stimuli by changing shape or size are known as active smart polymer. So, which means that it is mostly the reverse effect that has been kept in mind that you are giving some external stimuli and the polymer is changing its shape or size. Of course, the other way that uh, you know direct effect is also available in some of these polymers and we will talk about it whenever this polymer will come into the discussion. Now, active polymers can be divided into two subgroups. In one group the response can be anything other than electrical or and of course, mechanical. So, for example, if it is pH, if it is magnetic field or light for that matter okay, like polyanionic cellulose PACs and there are many such active polymers. I will show one example soon. So, these polymers are known as active polymers, simply active polymers as they respond to input stimuli which are generally non-electric in nature. Now, electroactive polymers on the other hand as the name suggests that they respond to the change of electrical input and hence they are known as EAP or electroactive polymer. Now, given a choice which one would we prefer? 
of course, we would prefer the electroactive polymer, because it is easier to control such a system. To control the movement of a system with the help of a magnetic field generation or with the help of a pH change chemically or with the help of light intensity is still not the technology has not developed up to that extent. On the other hand, to control it electrically, it is much better. So, one of the examples I told you in the terms of a you know only active polymer is these you know light based response of the azo benzene groups. These azo benzene groups actually contain these double bond of nitrogen. Now, what happens under visible light uh, as you can see that this is the double band of you know nitrogen here as you can see. Now, uh, under visible light these double bonds you know go to a C's conformation. So, the moment you put light on this they go to a C's configuration something like an angular configuration. So, that is why we say that it gets bent and under UV light this goes to the trans configuration. So, this is under UV light which means they remain straight. So, it is straight under UV light and under natural light it is bent. Now, if you develop a system like that as you can see and then successively you apply the UV light and plane light then what you can do is that you can bend it, you can straight it, bend it you know and like that the bending and straightening sequence you can actually use it in terms of locomotion of a system. So, this is one of the you know supposed to be a very active smart polymer which is coming up. So, this is one of the uses of an active smart polymer. Now, let us come back to the focus of electroactive polymers which I said will be more useful, EAPs will be more useful in terms of the development of actuators and sensors. So, if we compare electroactive polymers with the shape memory alloys which I will be talking about in the next lecture and electroactive ceramics where are they? The most noticeable thing is that the strain that it deforms is greater than 10 percent which is much much greater than any one of the other two categories. What it means is that you can make actually very large deformation in this system. The force on the other hand you know stress for example, 0.1 to 3 MPa which means wh whereas this is very very high this is very very low the force availability. Reaction speed is about microsecond to second electroactive polymers are generally quite fast, but it varies. Density wise once again the density is low drive voltage is extraordinarily low 2 to 7 volts compare that with electro ceramics 50 to 800 volts. The power consumption is also very low milliwatt range compare that with electro ceramics or SMS which is in the watts range. And the fracture toughness is almost absent it is very resilient and elastic. On the other hand the electroactive ceramics are very fragile. So, from many such points of views we can see that electroactive polymers are going to be much more useful for us in comparison to any other smart materials. Now, electroactive polymers itself can be subdivided into two subgroups. One is called electronic electroactive polymer, where the polymer the change in the polymer is driven by the change in the electric field or coulomb forces. For example, you think of uh, you know the PVDF I already said piezoelectric material that is one of the you know electronic electroactive polymer or dielectric EAPs, electrostrictive papers, ferroelectric polymers or liquid crystal elastomers all of them are you know they respond by the change of the electric field. On the other hand, for ionic electroactive polymer this actually responds due to the mobility or the diffusion of the ions. 
for example, ionic polymer gels or ionic polymer metal composites, we shortly call it IPMCs. There are many IPMCs available like Nafion from DuPont and Flamion from Ashai, Japan. Then conducting polymers and carbon nanotubes also come into the category of ionic electroactive polymer, where the changes happen due to the mobility or diffusion of the ions. Now, let us compare between the EEAPs and the IEAP that is electronic electroactive polymer and ionic electroactive polymer. The first important thing is that electronic electroactive polymer needs high actuation voltage something like greater than 150 volts per micron meter. On the other hand IEAPs require low driving voltage something like 1 to 5 volts. Secondly, Electroactive, electronic electroactive polymers have high energy density and rapid response time. On the other hand, ionic electroactive polymers are slow, but the amount of deformation is more and it performs better under wet condition because I told you that it is the mobility of the water you know in the ionic form that actually uh, creates the deformation. So, if it remains moist, more amount of ions of water will be you know going towards a particular size and as a result there will be more deformation in the system. So, there are many applications of it as you can see that uh, people have thought of using it as a dust wiper particularly for space applications. So, today's wiper how does it move you must have seen that it works like a rigid movement. So, because of that rigid movement it swipes a curve and if you have one more of this type then that swipes another curve, but then there will be some corners which you will not be able to reach by either of them and those corners you know if you have a on the other hand a dust wiper which can actually uh, vary its uh, length. Uh, if you use such dust you know uh, if, if you use such kind of a long wiper which can vary its length then you can actually go from one corner to the other corner with whatever work volume you wish it can go very nicely. So, that is what IPMC is very good for that kind of a system. Also for handling the samples just like our fingers it can deform to a very high extent for handling of the samples. So, if I try to you know uh, kind of bring all these applications together, we will see that one good application is in terms of mechanisms. It can be used for lens controlling, for mechanical lock, noise reduction, for flight control surfaces or anti-G shoots. So, for all sorts of mechanisms you can use this. You can use it for robotics like I sh showed you the example of the walking robot etcetera, biologically inspired robots, toys and animations. You can use it for human machine interfaces. Towards the end of this lecture I will show you one such application, tactile interface, okay, so, uh, you know artificial nose, things like that. Then you can use it for planetary interfaces like I told you that uh, you know you can use it for that wiper or gripper or uh, cleaner wiper or shape control of gossamer structures like that. There is a good use of this material for medical applications. For example, uh, it is used uh, for biological muscle augmentation okay, that is one, then miniature in vivo EAP robots for diagnostics and microsurgery, chatter steering mechanism, tissue growth engineering interfacing neuron to electronic devices, active bandages etcetera. You can also use such a system for liquid and gas flow control, controlled weaving for garments and uh, clothing, then for MEMS and for EM polymer sensors and transducers. So, it really has a very broad field of applications. Now, how does it look like? This is typically a ionic I should say this is an ionic 
electroactive polymer that is IEAP. So, what you have here is this is typically Nafion for example, would behave like this Nafion. So, you have this polymer here the ion exchange polymer and there are these depositions of particles on it. Now, these particles you know you can actually metallize the surface uh, you know with the help of an electrode you can metallize this surface. So, that you can apply the voltage to generate a polarity like cathode or anodes. Now, if you look at you know one of the uh, ionic electroactive polymer which is IPMC. So, IPMC is ionic polymer matrix composite, ionic polymer matrix composite. short form is IPMC. If I look at the structure of IPMC, what I am going to see is that the main chain is actually PTFE and that is the source of its strength. PTFE is something that is used even for your applications like non-stick or things like that. So, it is, it is very, very strong and on the other hand, it has some additional groups which are like sulfonate groups which is its source of polarity. So, IPMC is basically or nafium is actually pre fluorinated copolymer of PTFE and a pre fluorinated vinyl ether sulfonate. So, there are two copolymers that are used for developing this polymer. One gives it the strength in the backbone and the other gives it the source of polarity. Now, how does this system would work? This polymer would consist of a fixed network with negative charges balanced by mobile positive ion, this is important. It has a fixed network and in that fixed network there are these negative charges as you can see and these negative charges are balanced by positive ions around them mobile positive ions are just you know fixed to it. When it is subjected to DC voltage like this, what do you expect to happen? There will be then the accumulation of all the you know cations near the cathode. So, as a result you can see that you know all the cations are coming close to the cathode you know, so that kind of a migration that is taking place. So, here the blue things are the fixed anions as you can see, these are the fixed anions and these are the mobile cations. So, all these mobile cations as you can see they have migrated towards one side right, towards these uh, you know the negative side and as they have migrated what will happen is that the water molecules will move towards this side and it will create a hydrophilic expansion. That is why the whole thing has got bent. So, the polymer matrix will bend towards the anode side, this is your anode side. So, as the cations uh, you know will be moving, we are going to get the bend towards the you know anode side. However, what will happen is after some amount of you know substantial these things have their to neutralize you will get a back diffusion of water molecules which will cause a slow relaxation towards the cathode. That means, not everything will remain attached little bit of after some time back scattering would start to happen. Now, the extent of this actuation of course, depends on the type of the polymer, type of counter, counter ions, presence of moisture, quality of metallizations etcetera. But that is the basic principle of how an IPM C would work. Now, these IPMCs are having several characteristics, one is that large deformation low actuation voltage and fast response. So, here what we can see is that if you build up these two you know electrodes and you pass a current 
you are going to get this kind of a bent shape in the system. So, it will change its shape as you are going to apply the electric voltage. Something similar you, know, you can see on the nafions here. Now, can we get only one type of curvature, only in one direction? No, you can actually depending on the type of electrodes, okay, you can actually get two different types of electrodes like here and then if you apply the voltage, you may get upward bending in one side and downward in the other side and as a result you can get a bidirectional curvature. If you have more such combinations of electrodes, so you have a beam let us say which has more combination of electrodes, this is the top view of it. So, what I am going to see? I am going to see a wiggly niggly motion of the system, somewhat similar to the motion of the snakes. So, you see the double curvature is really very, very beneficial for this kind of a system. Now, double bending in one of the typical material like selimian, which is a generic name of ion exchange membranes of Asai class you will see that it consists of selimian and the left half of its top and bottom surface are coated with uh, gold foils. Whereas, the right half of its top and bottom are coated with something called dotite. Now, dotite is an electrically conductive adhesive containing silver powder manufactured by Fujikura. So, as a result you will get a double curvature in this system. So, these are some of the strategies like you coat with two different materials and then you get a double curvature out of the system. IPMC based actuators have many applications, but the major applications are in terms of single link manipulators. That means, when only one link, one single link you have and using that itself you need to bend it enough in order to hold something and in order to transfer this thing at some other location. So, that is single link manipulation. You can of course, then use it for multi link grippers, for vibration generation and control, for four bar manipulation and for biomimetic systems. IPMCs thus have versatile applications. Like as a single electrode, if you use only one electrode, then you know you can actually you will see that you can actually go through this kind of an workspace. So, that is the maximum that you can cover with this type of a system. On the other hand, if you have three or four of them, then you can use it for you know holding something some material okay, from space. So, you can use it in the form of developing a gripper system. If you use two or more patches, then in fact, you can actually you know manipulate a small object in the work volume and the degree of freedom available will depend on the number of such patches like one patch and then you have a second patch. So, you can easily you know make this kind of shapes etcetera. You can not only that you can also make a four bar mechanism using you know active uh, polymer like IPMC. As you can see here, this is a four bar mechanism. So, 1, 2, 3 and that is the fourth link. So, with this four bar mechanism, as you are moving this rocker part of it, then the coupler transfers the motion and you get this part of course, becoming flexible, you get a you know kind of a motion uh, due to the bending of this link. Now, that workspace of course, you can control by applying voltage in the system in an active manner, so that you can control the workspace that it can generate. One of the IPMC which is coming up in a big way is known as the gold polypyrrole IPMCs. So, that is good in the terms of uh, lightness, corrosive, anti corrosive properties etcetera. This is what I told you is a fascinating example of tomorrow that this robot here has leaps artificial leaps which is made of IPMCs. 
what it does is that through its vision it is scanning the uh, lips of uh, this person and then what it is going to do is that it is going to, so it is scanning the lips here, it is scanning the lips here and it is going to change its shape, shape of these lips so that it can mimic the master system. So, tomorrow's you know animations can be based on this kind of biomimetic systems. So, this is where we will end today's lecture and in the next lecture we will talk about shape memory alloys, we will give an introduction, also we will talk about one and two way shape memory effects. Thank you.